My name is Leon White. I'm part of the DM technical team. And so let's start. Excavators. Uh, I assume everybody is well familiar with such type of equipment. Uh, it's presented in several industry for particular heavy and mining industry. Today we'll be cover one possible type and common type of excavator, which is usually consistent of a rotating uh, mounting frame uh, or a housing mounted over uh, some displacement device, a boom and arm that uh, together with actuators will provide uh, a mechanism that will control the displacement of a bucket, right? And this is the kind of equipment that we usually simulate inside Rock DM. So such type of equipment is primarily used for digging uh, uh, surface and also material handling for heavy material. And it can vary in a wide range for size, uh, ranging from very small scale excavators for uh, large ones, depending on the application and type of material that it's interacting with. Usually we can uh, do either a localized analysis focusing on the bucket performance per se. So we can apply the motion displacement directly on the bucket and do evaluations as wear performance and how it's handling the material. Or we can consider the whole uh, excavator, consider the bone arm and even the actuators to bring accuracy of the completed motion of excavator, right? So as a quick example here, we are focusing on the bucket analysis, so all the rest of the equipment uh, was not considering. And we are doing here a uh, coupled analysis with um, mechanical and as structure analysis as mechanical. So we can see here that the loads caused by the particles are exported to as mechanical, where we can evaluate stress and displacement and also wear patterns on the bucket itself. So this is one possible uh, focus of our analysis, or as we are going to show and demonstrate today, the complete mechanism of the motion of the arm of an excavator. Um, for those who are familiar, uh, we have a very uh, complete motion kernel inside Rocky. But for today's example, we will also highlight the brand new integration with ANSYS Motion, which allow us to import a predefined ANSYS Motion setup, as you are seeing here in this animation on the bottom right. Bring this animation setup inside Rock and perform the whole analysis of the particles inside Rocky. Also, uh, exp extracting the forces, reactions on the bucket, evaluate uh, the removal of material from this ground pit, and also observe wear prone regions on our bucket. So, in this demo here, we are going to show how to define and import a simulation using ANSYS Motion pre-generated FMU file. So we can always start a simulation by providing a few uh, informations that will make it easier later on if you want to review or uh, check what are the conditions for a given simulation. You can always check under our first icon here previous code study 01, you can provide a name for it. So uh, starting again, we can start uh, by inputting just uh, general information regarding our simulation itself to be helpful to validate and check later on when you're coming back to the same simulation. After that, we always check physical models. So for, in our case, rolling resistance, what type of force you want to include. And to include ANSYS Motion, you just need to enable ANSYS Motion coupling module. This module will request us to import an FMU file 
And this FML file is the one that will drive the motion inside Rocky. And as simple as that, all the motion is already set up. I also enable a few boundary collisions to post-process layer on. To import the geometry, the same FMU that drives the motion will be imported, and it will also bring all the geometries uh, that will be evaluated. So all the answers motion set up, both geometry and motion, are directly import, make it uh, much easier to configure everything inside Rocky. Additionally, we'll bring the ground bit just to capture the particles in Rocky. This doesn't geometry don't need to be included on ANSYS motion side. Good. With all the geometries in place and remind that the motion is already captured, we don't need to take this into concern in this in on rock side. We will improve the surface representation on the bucket by making the triangles smaller, just to bring more details on the wear uh, pattern representation at the end of the simulation. So whenever we want surface analysis, we can uh, improve the representation directly in Rocky. Once the geometry is done, we can skip the motion frame. We need to set up material. In our case, I are going to prepare the material for the particles, and also create one separate material for the ground pit, different from the uh, material used on the geometry, just to be able to uh, set the interactions correctly between the ground and the particles, and we are assigning this material to the ground geometry. For the material interactions, we can uh, set friction, adhesion, between uh, particle and particle, and also particle and each set of geometry boundary that we have. In our case, we will set between particle and particle, and particle and the ground, and we will leave the default values for the contacts with the structure. Later, we will add particles and we will not con be concerned about the size of the particles for the time being. We will just uh, set the rolling resistance as we are going to load a pre-generated uh, pile of material. We can do this by running a previous simulation, exporting the coordinates and size, and later on reimported as a CSV using the custom injection. So I can set up a custom injection, define what's the particle to be used, and import a pre-made CSV. It already knows the position, size, orientation, and number of every single particle that I want to use in my domain. I will set the simulation duration, and I will be ready to start this run. To use the custom input is a good way to repeat the same simulation without the need to run the injection of the particles. So it can help you save some time during the simulation process. When the simulation starts, you can already start post-processing it. For example, coordinate by size of the particle, and I can display the whole simulation, reminding that all the motion is predefined in essence motion. So it allows us to set the displacement of each actuator and the resulting motion on boom, arm, and bucket is actually calculated by ANSYS motion. Good. Here I want to check reaction forces in Y direction on the bucket itself. So I can see what is the forces that the bucket undergo during the scooping of the material, where it's uh, digging into the pile of material, and then what is the uh, residual force due to the weight of material on the bucket while it's translating from the pit to the point that we will deploy the material. Right? And I can also measure what is this mass that can help us evaluate the performance of the bucket 
of course we want a bug that uh, will require less uh, time to capture and hold the material transform from two points so it's important to know what's the mass of captured particles during this process here so i can create a cube to filter the particles that are inside the bucket only i can calculate what's the mass of this material at this instant of time by creating also an output for that this output will make it easier to repeat the simulation. I don't need to redo this analysis. I just need to check this cal final calculated value or even in integration inside ANSYS Workbench and ANSYS OptLang, it will also be exposed such parameter and don't need to repeat the same analysis every time. Good. We can also investigate the wear pattern uh on the bucket due to the excavation of uh of the particle ground so we can plot the tangential stress that the bucket undergoes right let's adjust the range of those stress values We can see a few points uh, remain, remind that those are instantaneous values, but what I'm more concerned is the average uh, stress value. So let's create a time average of the tangential stress during the whole process. And let's use its color and represent the contours of uh, the wear pattern. So we can see uh, a high wear prone regions right on the bottom or outside bottom side of the excavator at the, at the point of the teeth of the of the excavator which required for the may require for the investigation today if you can please go back to my screen yeah thank you very much so th those two analysis that we have shown before can help uh, the designer to bring inside for excavator, investigating wear prone uh, regions on the bucket, efficiency of the operation, how much of material is being removed, evaluate the handling and checking for different conditions of material. Of course, more uh, different materials will behave different during the digging process and also predict forces on the surface of the bucket and also on the actuators that might lead to failures. So uh, just as a reminder, this uh, we still have two additional sessions for the 15 minutes webinar on November 24 and December 15 for dryers, equipment and coating analysis. Thank you everyone. And if you have any question, please type on the chat window or question and answer.